So in this video, uh, I'm essentially just going to talk about message boxes. Just restart the kernel there. And a message box is basically something that pops up to you and, you know, it has text in it. And sometimes you can say yes or no. Sometimes it'll say, OK, cancel. Various different things. So imagine this usage thing and it pops up as a message. Probably doesn't make sense what I'm saying. Doesn't really matter. Anyway, I've got the just regular imports and everything that we need. So I'll just make a window with the title message box. There we go. Right. Now, I'll show you how to use a message box. And if you didn't really understand my explanation, don't worry so much. You will do as soon as I make a message box. So we're going to make a button. We're going to make it in the main window. And we're going to say the text is equal to message box. So msg box. We're going to add a command, which we're going to call msg box. I know that we haven't made this command yet, but don't worry about the making of it. We'll make it soon. I'm going to add it to the grid. I'm going to say row is equal to zero. Column is equal to zero, yada, yada, yada. And now, in order to make a message box, we essentially need to define a function that makes one. And then when we click the button, the message box will be made. You can't really make a message box. In. I mean, I suppose you probably could make a message box in another way, but wouldn't really make our end it. Right, so msg box, we'll call it. Same name as this uh, command here, because we want on click for this to happen when we click this. And we're just going to say message box dot ask. Oh, not ask. Ask. Yes. No, actually, we'll do a show info one. There are several different types of message boxes, by the way. And you can actually have, as you can see here, a title argument message argument and options so there's up to three parameters we're just going to use the title and the message so we'll just put title as our first uh, piece of text we'll just put message as our second piece of text and you'll see that when we run this we'll have a little button and when we click it we should get a show info message box okay so here we are we click this and you can see that the title is title and the message is message and you just click OK. OK is the only response to this. So this is a show info message box. We'll get rid of that. Now, there are several other message boxes, but I'll just show you what the main ones are. I think these are all of them, but then there might be more because they do update from time to time to Kinter. So this show info, show warning, show error. Ask a question. I think there's ask yes or no as well, isn't there? It's ask yes or no. Oops. Ask yes no. And there's also ask okay cancel. All right. There's probably more. And all we need to do to use them is I'll copy and paste this so you can see a few different examples with the same title message kind of thing. We'll start with uh, start with show warning. So show warning here run that there yada 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 I'll actually copy and paste this here as well into there da, da, da. just so i can copy and paste it more efficiently and now you see how i've got this like a, a warning triangle here and it's just the okay is the only output you'll get there but yeah you can see that this has changed from the info box as before to be a bit bit more serious a box right so that's the show warning and the next one is show error so we'll put show error here let's just run that did you hear that sound did you hear that sound it's got title and message okay but listen again Get rid of that so the error actually has a really strange sound it's got this da -da -da, da -da -da sound like as if an error has occurred it's got a red little red circle with a cross in it there so you know a little bit of a different sort of uh, visual interpretation there copy and paste this again and what's the next one ask question 
ask questions a bit different and you'll see why okay so we'll just put ask question you'll see why it's different is it running yes it is okay open the message box oops i think i uh, there we are there we are there's ask question right so it's got a question mark as a circle and it's got the title and the message as per normal however rather than just having okay uh, as an output or an option there's now two options there's a yes and a no option i'll show you how to use those later on they're only really one and zero they're only true false booleans in reality but yeah we'll get to that later anyway ask question has two uh, two possibilities which will actually be received as outputs so i'm going to say no to this right we we'll close this down okay we'll copy and paste this again and we'll show ask yes and no and ask okay cancel right let's have a look message box message yes no and that's because oops no it isn't the right one i've messed that up there sorry about that needed to be ask yes no sorry change this to ask yes no sorry about that good thing i can tell from the icons a little bit eh? there we go ask yes no it's pretty much the same as ask question actually when when i'm looking at it, it's basically the same in fact i don't know why they even bothered to make two separate ones for it or is that because i'm going to run it again because i'm not entirely sure yeah no, it's exactly the same how odd it's exactly the same as ask question so i wonder why they even bothered to uh essentially duplicate it i guess some people like to do it in their different ways eh but there's essentially no difference really to the icon or the output and now we're gonna ask okay cancel and this one is actually a bit different and you'll see what i mean by that when we run it okay so let's open this message box and instead of yes and no we've got okay and cancel all right so those are I think all the message boxes currently, but it, there may be other message boxes, I don't know. So I'm going to copy and paste this, and we're not going to ask OK, cancel, we're just going to ask, uh, we'll ask yes, no, right? And the only thing we've asked yes and no is when I run it, I ask yes and no. When I reply, I get nothing back. I can't do anything with that yes or that no answer, right? So what we want to do is we want to get this response. We want to get this message or response or this output. So instead of asking for a message box, we're going to say that our output, which we'll call an output, is equal to message box. And now we're going to restore, we're actually going to store this, um, the output, the result of ask yes or no as a variable, right? We'll print this output and output. Can't evoke button command application has been destroyed. Well, oh yeah, sorry, sorry. There we go. Didn't have all of it open there. So let's ask yes and let's see what gets printed out. We get true. Let's see what gets printed out for no. We get false. So yes is equal to true. A no is equal to false here, okay? We can see that when we put this into uh, a variable, we actually get the output back, okay? That's because this message box isn't concluded until a response is given. So yes is true, no is false, okay? So now that we have this output, we can do something with it, okay? I'll copy and paste this. I'll show you what we can do with it, okay? We are actually going to make a label, I'd say. I'd like to make a label. So I'm going to say if an out put equals equals true. Can't remember, is it true in capitals? Yes, it is. Too, way too much time uh, messing around with other languages. So we're going to say label. I'm going to make a label. I'm going to make it in our window. I'm going to say that text is equal to you answered yes we're going to put it just underneath our button equals one 
column called zero. And essentially, what we're doing is if the user responds with uh, a yes, i.e. the output is true, then we're going to make a little label that tells them that they've answered yes. Else, if they've answered no, we're going to make a little label that says that they answered no. Quite simple. You answered no. Pretty simple. And we're going to add this to the grid at the same position as where we'd have the other one. Because when we change answers, we want that to be reflected in our label. So column is equal to zero. Let's make this now. Let's hope it works. Oops. Oops. I need to get rid of this. I'll get rid of the new one as well, just so that we don't have these. So I'll say yes. It says that I've answered yes. I'll say no. It says I've answered no. So the way that you get message box uh, responses, or really in any program, it doesn't any uh, package or module, it doesn't necessarily have to be to Kinter. Anything that sort of gives you a message box and waits for an answer, all you've got to do to get its output or its response is just store it in a variable. And then once you have that, you can print that out like we've seen here. And once you know what the various possible outcomes uh, are received as, what the outputs uh, come back as, you can do something with each output. So if output's true, false, or maybe several numbers, one, two, three, and four, do something, okay? But that is how you use message boxes. And as I say, just use this simple method of storing the uh, response in a variable. Once you know what the responses are, you can just put them out here as outputs. That's it. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed.